y is negative 2x minus 1, and we have y is x plus 5. So this means what number plus 5 equals another number, and then what, what is negative 2 times the number minus 1 to get another number? So we're trying to find um, a coordinate that makes both of these true. And the first method we're going to go over is how to solve by graphing. Graphing is a visual approach. It's a good approach. Uh, if you have a technology, it always works usually. Uh, the problem with solving by graphing is when the answer is like 2.7 and it's hard to see, you know, where exactly the solution is. So um, it's not the most efficient method, but it is a method to help you see visually. So let's start. Hopefully you all have paper out. We'll start with the first one, negative 2x minus 1. There's pieces of information I could get from that. One is the slope. Slope is negative 2. Okay, remember this is mx plus b. So the slope is negative 2. I put that over 1. And what that means is you go down 2 over 1. Okay, nobody's in the waiting room. Now, where do you start? Okay, that's important because... Like, say we start here, you go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, but you got to know where to start. And where you know to start is what we call the B, the y-intercept. So our B is negative 1. That tells us where to start. So on my graph, that's where I start. I start at negative 1. Are you all able to see that okay? Is it clear? Oh, someone messaged me. Yes, good, okay. So I start at negative one, and then from negative one, I am gonna drop two and go over one. So I'm gonna drop two, go over one, and then I'm going to drop two, go over one. Now, something I think is important, and you may be thinking, um, if you have two coordinates, technically, as long as you have two points, you could draw a line and be done. Uh, me, um, I, I struggle with drawing straight lines, so I like to put as many coordinates on there. It helps me get more of an exact solution, and I find it's easier to connect the dots. So I'm going to go again down two over one, down two over one. So that's my slope. Now, to get the other side, I would go up to left one. So I'm going to go up to left one. From there, uh, if you have a ruler, great. I don't know if I have one. Forgot to grab that. I have a ruler somewhere, I just don't know where I left it. So I'll just freehand it. And if you have to freehand it, that's fine. Just do your best at a straight line. Don't make fun of this. For high school math, freehanding, as long as you try, should be fine. But if you were doing this for like an engineer or some sort of project, you would 100% use a ruler, okay? So that's my first equation. We started at negative one, we dropped two, went to the right one. Next one, x plus five. Let's see what we could get from there. Um, the slope, this is like a one x. So my slope is one. Now one, you just put one over one. So we're going to go up one over one. 
Now, you may notice that you always go to the right, but if it's negative, you go down. If it's positive, you go up, okay? And then where do I start? I start at B is five. So if I was to put this in a word problem, this would be like you start with $5 and every day somebody gives you a dollar, right? If I was to put this in a word problem with money, uh, let's see, you, you start with, you owe someone $1 and then every day you owe another $2. So you just keep spending. All right, so we start at five. And then from there, I just go up one over one. My lights do turn off. And then the other side, I'd go down one left one. See where they intersect. And it's up to you. Um, since I put this recording out there, um, if you want to take notes while we go, you can. Or if you just want to watch now and then take notes later, that's fine too. I won't be collecting your notes. But I will say um, I, I, I make these videos to help you guys out. So let's go ahead and make our line. And again, I'm going to freehand it. Now where they intersect, that is what we call a solution. So you may see on the top, all solutions of a linear equation are on its graph. To find a solution of what we call a system. Now why do we call it a system? It's when you have more than one equation. So we could have three equations, four equations, five. Since this is high school math, um, we'll probably only do two. Um, I know later next week we'll do three, but uh, two or three at the most. So you need a point that each line has in common. In other words, you need to find where those two lines intersect. So looking at the graph, I think based off X and then Y, that would be negative two, one, two, three. So I think the solution is negative two, three. Right here, where they intersect. And it's kind of small, so I'm double checking my work. Now, how do you know if you're right or wrong? Um, well, you are saying that the, the, the thing that makes both of these true is when x is negative 2 and y is 3. So let's check our answer. So let's first start off. Is negative 2 plus 5 equal to 3? So I'm plugging x in and y in, and I'm seeing if I get a true statement. So is 3 equal to negative 2 plus 5? Yeah. So first is negative 2, oops, that should be 3. Is 3 equal to negative 2 plus 5? And I got that from y equals x plus 5. Yes, that is true. Now let's try the other one. y equals negative 2x minus 1. Is y uh, 3 equal to negative 2, and I say x is negative 2, minus 1? Well, negative two times negative two is four, four minus one is three. So I know without a doubt, like there is no question that I got the right answer. Um, if you have any questions, um, just type it in the chat box. And then if it's like a really complicated question, you wanna ask um, over words, you can feel free to unmute yourself right now and just ask me. Does anyone have questions? Okay. 
I don't see anything in the chat box. Now, if you this was a typical uh, classroom setting, I would say, okay, now you go try D. Um, but since it's not, I'm mostly just going to be showing you examples. And you know, when there's so many kids in a Zoom meeting, I, I don't, I probably won't call on anyone, but I do expect you to pay attention so you can learn. Um, but D, we could do D real fast. So this one, I might go through it a tiny bit faster. So what do I collect from there? I collect from there that the slope is one third. So that means we're gonna go up one over three from the one third. I also can collect where you start. You start at negative three. So you go over here to negative three And then you go up one over three. Okay, I could do that. Up one over three. And then down one, left three. Connect the dots, which again, I struggle with. but I'm at least trying to make a straight line. All right, now the next one, slope. Uh, I don't know, why intercept? I don't know. And the reason why I don't know is because we do not have this in y equals mx plus b form. Okay? So we need to get y by itself. Well, y is almost by itself. It just has a 2x with it. So let's subtract 2x from both sides. And then 4 minus 2x do not combine. So we put the x first. And then your constant. And now I know my slope. It's negative 2 over 1 which means you're gonna go down two to the right one. And where do you start? You start at four. So I start up here at four. And then luckily we're going down. If I was going up, it may not intersect. So we're gonna go down two over one. Ah, right there. And again, you don't have to put all these coordinates, but I do because it helps me connect the dots, especially without a ruler. So you can see they intersect right here. Uh, before I draw the line, that looks like three, negative two. Let's see, one, two, three, negative two. And then teachers love like when you box it out make it easier to find your answer for checking it. And then let's go ahead and make my line. I'm going to move this for a second so I can actually. All right. Now this time we're just going to check our answer in our head. So one third of three. And why did I get three? X is three, negative two. One third of three is one. One minus three is negative two. That works. And then when I take two times three, that's six. And then six plus negative two, that is four. So I know without a doubt this is correct. Any questions so far? No? All right. So now the question may come up, is there always just one solution? Okay. So will they always intersect at one place? And so we just need to make sure
in your notes. We see, and you don't have to worry about the vocab, but you can see that what we've done so far has looked like this, one solution. However, you could end up with two lines that we call parallel, and those will never cross. So that means there's no coordinate that makes both of those true. And so we would say no solution. Or it could end up being the same line. So it'd be a line and then you graph the other one and it's right on top of it. So technically every single coordinate is a solution. There's too many solutions to list. So that's why we use the word infinite. Okay, we're not gonna list out every solution. It goes forever. So we just use infinite. Okay. And then we had more examples in the notes. So like we said, this solution was six, five. This was an example where there was no solution. And then here they got the same thing. So that's why they said infinitely many solutions.